boy do I have a story to tell you. If you saw my last video I left off where I was working on the MR2 trying to figure out why I had no power going to my fuel pump or fuel pump relay which was keeping the car from starting and running. I'm pretty sure I found the problem. That is continuity to ground where I should have power. For the fuel pump circuit. I just got back from the airport for dropping off Junkyard Dave and if you don't know who Junkyard Dave is, he's another automotive YouTuber. So he flew down here to help out with the MR2 to try to help troubleshoot this electrical problem with me and now I'm going to stitch in the past two days of electrical troubleshooting that Dave and I did on this car. First plan of attack, what we're going to do is run power to the fuel pump and then a ground and we're going to see if we can jump the fuel pump. The fuel pump is unplugged right now and Dave just hooked up a wire to a 12 volt source and you can hear in the background the fuel pump is running. Hold on to your tater tots. It dies. To give you guys an idea of what's going on right now, here is the fuel pump. What we basically just did was jumped a power wire to this side of the fuel pump right here. This side is where you're supposed to have 12 volts in going to the fuel pump. Problem is, none of this circuit right now has 12 volts like it's supposed to. However, there is power coming from the ECU into the fuel pump relay. So here's the circuit opening relay. This is where power goes to your fuel pump circuit right here out this point. So in the circuit opening relay, there's a set of contacts right here that need to close and allow the fuel pump to run. The next morning. Junkyard Dave. Hi. You're so goofy. He's like super shy when he's on camera on my videos, but yet like he has his own YouTube channel and he can just like talk and stuff. It's so funny how that works. It's because you're not in control of the camera, huh? I'm not nervous. It's just that I... I'm the one coming up with the, the plans on my videos. Dave came down here and he's like a huge electrical guru. We're gonna just like kind of bounce ideas off each other electrically to get this thing figured out. He had an idea to completely bypass my fuel pump relay circuit and basically just wire it so that way the fuel pump comes on when the car is in the ACC position but it'll still go through the something opening circuit, relay. circuit opening relay. Yeah. So this way like it'll draw its power still from the circuit opening relay and that way in case of like an accident or whatever it'll still cut power to the fuel pump for a safety reason. This right here is EA1. It is a plug that is a hodgepodge of wires that was like this when I bought the car because when you go from a JDM engine harness to a USDM body harness you pretty much have to repin and swap everything over. So what we need to do is look for a green wire with a red stripe that is a ground for the circuit opening relay. Ground's a contact so it closes the circuit opening relay on the fuel pump side to give power to that blue block wire that goes to the fuel pump relay. If you don't have that ground then that doesn't close so it never gets power to the fuel pump relay. Right here, green wire with a red stripe, EA1 plug. And across from the plug would be this red wire for black stripe that is cut. This needs to go to the ECU, which it is not. His thought process is like, if it's not needed to make the car function, just get rid of it. And I'm like, I want things to be as close to factory. And he's like, nah, just delete that. <laughs> so, but it kind of helps, I think, like bouncing ideas off each other when it comes to troubleshooting because we think completely different when it comes to this stuff. There it is, FC, which means on this last plug, it's going to be the third wire from the right. According to the wiring schematic, that wire should go directly from the ECU to plug EA1, which it is not doing. It's blue wire with the yellow stripe that I'm pointing at that comes from terminal FC for fuel cut on the ECU goes down into this loom under the air box and we cannot find where it goes. We've connected it to a wire that provides a ground for the circuit opening relay 
and we're going to jump it to terminal FC in the ECU because that's the way it shows it should be wired in the USDM MR2 wiring schematic. Here goes nothing. Well, that works. So, I guess I'm gonna try Dave's idea of cutting that wire and splicing it into the ground on FC for EA1, because it does work. I just wish I knew where the other end of that wire went. I, w I wish I could just make this like factory, but there's no way to do that, because you have a JDM engine and a USDM car. Southern time. I'm gonna cut this wire from FC and splice it into EA1. Complete the circuit. I also just stuck my hand on my soldering iron and burnt the crap out of my finger. This is taken care of for now. I'll zip tie all this stuff once I know everything is working correctly. And then this plug right here is the USDM EA1 plug that I need to cut off. So I will wait to do this until I know everything works. These remaining wires right here, I'll find out what they actually go to and then they will be kept off if not needed. Right Dave? Uh, Dave kind of convinced me on this. I'm going to delete the fuel pump resistor going to the fuel pump relay. That way it'll keep the fuel pump um, running in the 12 volt mode at all times. So I won't ever have to worry about running lean if something ever were to go wrong. Looks a little bit cleaner in the engine bay now with that relay gone and I got all the wire loom done back down in there. It's all nice and wrapped up and zip tied. So here goes nothing. Still dies. Well, that's awesome. That means that the fuel pump is good to go. I can hear it coming on as soon as I start the car. It's working as it's supposed to. The only thing that has changed now is the resistor is deleted. So the fuel pump will get um, full power all the time. It won't be like a low voltage mode and a high voltage mode. So that's good. That's fixed. So that means this car will run now if I keep it running. We just have to figure out this idle air control valve. So now that you guys are all caught up on where we're at on the MR2 this morning, right before I brought Dave to the airport, he had one more idea that he wanted to try and that was to adjust the timing on the distributor. So what he did was he just loosened up the distributor, I hopped in the car and I would start the car and he would just slowly move the distributor back and forth but that didn't quite fix the problem. What did fix the problem though, was this vacuum line right here. <laughs> now this is just a temporary fix, but the way this thing was set up when I first got the car was this was completely looped, bypassing the throttle body. So it was basically like a vacuum on either side of the throttle body, which was causing a weird vacuum issue. So we cut that line in half and I stuck these <laughs> irrigation cap thingamabobbers for irrigation, like for your house, in the lines, and the car will actually idle. However, the air idle control valve on this car is still bad. It doesn't get 12 volts to it. However, the car still idles. But yeah, let's bleed this clutch. Attached. I don't really like this fitting that it came with. It's really stupid. It tries to fit inside the bleeder screw and the hose is too small to just slip over the end of it. They should have just included a larger diameter hose that would just slide over the end of your bleeder screw. That would have made way more sense. This can't be real life. It says allows one person to quickly and easily bleed air from brake lines. Scroll down a bit and it says 
Pump brake pedal slowly until brake pressure becomes hard while holding down pedal. Open bleeder screw. Now I'm too nice to bash any product or any brand. But does that make any sense to you? The whole purpose of buying this is because one person can't physically hold the brake pedal down and then go open the bleeder screw while holding the brake pedal down. Anyone else catching this here? <laughs> uh, oh my god, all right. What I did is disconnect the line going after the clutch reservoir and I tried filling it with fluid to fill the line with fluid to help me bleed it because there's just there's no fluid in the entire line. It's all empty and it's just not bleeding. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the auto parts store. I'm gonna buy a real brake bleeder, like one that creates vacuum on the system. So I will snap my other finger because I can't snap my left hand, I don't know why. Snap my fingers and I'll have a Blake breeder. <laughs> Blake breeder? <laughs> all right, I got a better brake bleeder. So let's uh let's try not to fail at this anymore time for round two i got it all hooked up behind me all right so we have fluid flow yay so it's nighttime now and i finally got the car bled. I have been bleeding the clutch on this car since like one o'clock in the afternoon since I brought Dave to the airport and I finally conceded and I went up the street and I asked my neighbor for help so he could push the clutch pedal while I was under the car opening the valve. So he came down with his daughter and he's been helping me and dude that was so hard to get that thing bled. It took forever but it's finally bled and the car is now ready to drive. It's dark out though so I'm gonna try to film this in the dark first drive at nighttime. All right, here it goes. You ready? You ready? Come here. <laughs> here it goes. Down it goes. I can't believe I'm driving the MR2 right now. First start. <laughs> I'm driving the MR2. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm driving this thing. Oops. I drove the MR2. <laughs> it drives now. I'm so excited. It breaks up at like, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000 RPM. So I need to fix that stuff to get this thing to run smoothly and then get a boost controller for it also because it's going to be running on just wastegate pressure, I believe, since I don't have a boost controller and it has the CT20B turbo. Also, my tachometer is way off. At like redline, it shows like 2,000 RPM. So my tack like, it shows idle and then as you rev it, it just like barely climbs to like two grand. It's like the formula, the math of it is off or something, I don't know. But yeah, it runs-ish, <laughs> I can drive it now. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go start editing it right now so I can get this thing up in time for you guys. And um, yeah, next video on the MR2, we'll get the rest of these bugs hopefully worked out. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.